Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video I'm going to show you my process of creating sample packs in Contact. Now behind me I have a Juno 106 from 1984, picked it up off Reverb.com, uh, refurbished. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample it over essentially the entire range of the keyboard, load it into Contact, and make a cool instrument that we can play. And then I'm going to give it away on my website for free. Uh, the link will be in the description. If you don't feel like sticking around, you just want to download it, uh, that's fully up to you. general process is that in Logic, on a MIDI output or whatever they call it, I have a bunch of MIDI drawn for the range of the keyboard, just going up in semitones, and, or semitones, and I have it set to a certain length that I know will work for the release, and I have a certain distance between each note, so that way it's holding down the note for a certain amount of time, and when it lets go, it waits a bit until it goes to the next note. Uh, the reason for this is that I wanted to capture a pretty long sample time, so each sample is going to be about 25 seconds long for six octaves. <laughs> so I think the total amount of time that this takes is about a long time. 30 minutes. That's what it is. About 30 minutes. So I would have to, <laughs> if I was doing this manually, I'd have to click and keep doing it. So since, uh, you know, it's a MIDI instrument, the Juno 106 has MIDI, I can just have the MIDI get routed to my complete control, which has a MIDI interface that gets looped around, plugged into the Juno. Audio output of the Juno goes back into my audio interface, which gets recorded. So I basically just hit record on the audio channel, and then I mute the track, and then I just go on my computer and do whatever else. And then I come back half an hour later, and I have samples. So it's a very streamlined process. It's a very streamlined process. All right, so I'm going to hit record, and then I'm going to come back after I kind of cut everything up and name it, and then we'll take it from there. All right, so this is what Logic looks like after I cut up and named all the samples. So I'll zoom in, and I'll show you what I did. Uh, this top track here is what's called a MIDI output instrument or something, uh, external MIDI instrument. Uh, and what it allows me to do is I can program some MIDI in there, and then I can it just gets outed to my Juno, and then that signal gets recorded. And you kind of have to play with some timing settings because there's kind of a timing issue. So you can set like a lag or you can send things a little early if you want. And I tuned that, you know, back when I first got the MIDI interface. So that was all set. Now you notice that everything's all chopped up. Um, the original file that was actually produced was, you know, actually this long 30 minute track that just had all these samples on it. So what I actually did is there's a function in Logic where if you have your scissors tool selected, you hold Command to activate it, then you hold Alt or Option, and then you can click, and then it just does that to every single uh, like even spacing of that interval you choose. So now what I can do is I can zoom in here, and I can see that it was a little bit late. Uh, if I make this bigger, so all that, so it's a little late. So then what I have to do is I highlight everything in the track, and then I can shift it back. Now it should be roughly the same for every single sample. It might be a little different. Uh, I unclick, and now I can go in and I can actually separate everything. And this is kind of a little, a little too close. You, you usually want a little bit of, uh, like a teeny bit of silence at the beginning, because uh, you can correct it in the interface. But something like this wouldn't even be audible anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, just make sure you're starting, you know, either right at the sound source or like if anything before. And then what I do is, you know, I can click after I go through and I cut all the samples, make sure they're good. I can highlight them all and I can go up to this more section and I can set a fade in value and a fade out value for everything. So usually what I do is I set a fade in and then I can highlight them all. I can get them to roughly the length. I can change my tool to a fade tool and do a fade out if I want to. Uh, usually I would. You at least want a couple milliseconds of a fade out just in case, you know, there's anything there. You don't want it to make a pop. It's better to have an abrupt ending than a pop. Ideally, you will have a nice smooth ending, but, you know, if you had to choose, it's better to have no pops. So as you can see here, I just have a tiny little sliver of a fade out because the Juno, you know, I had it set to produce a nice long fade out anyway, so the signal decays to zero already in all of these samples. So I turn off that. What I do to name them is I hold shift and N on the sample, and that lets me name it. And I go through, there might be a way to automate this, 
I haven't really looked into it, uh, but I just go through and every single one, I just name them all. So it's a little tedious, but for six octaves, I think it only took me 20, 30 minutes. So it's, it's a frustrating 20, 30 minutes, but you know, at the end of the day, it's 20, 30 minutes. So it's not a big deal. And since I already saved 30 minutes of my own time by having it automatically record everything, um, it's really no time lost. So if you know a way to automate that process, uh, let me know. So then what I do is now that I have all this set to have the proper notes, I can highlight them all, right click, and hit export as audio files. And as you can see, I've already done this, but the way that I did it was, oh, that's something else. You go down to this pattern section here, type in Juno 106, oh, not 105. I named it Simple Square because I just set a kind of simple square wave setting. So then I go here and I can save them as wave files, bit depth 24, that's what I've been using. Um, if you had reverb effects or any kind of other effects on your audio files, you want to hit include audio tail. Um, unless you've gone through and checked every single sample, it's good practice to set this because if you if you have an overlap in your samples or, or anything like that, then they'll bleed into each other or you know, another effect is that it'll get cut off. The reverb you know, will just abruptly stop. So that doesn't sound good. I know for a fact that I don't have anything. The only thing I put on this track was a, a little bit of compression and limiting just to make sure that all the samples are the same volume. Um, in addition to that, um, I usually normalize them so that they're all kind of brought to the max level anyways. Um, but you don't have to do that. And then what I have this little modifier down here called region name. And what that's going to do is it's going to get all those notes and it's going to put it in that spot. So an example file name is going to be Juno 106, simple square, C0, and then it's going to go C sharp 0, D0, D sharp 0, etc., all the way up to uh, <laughs> B5. So uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of samples that I can export, and this automates the whole process, so it makes it very easy. You just click export, and you know it'll go around for like five minutes exporting these tracks. You cancel, and then you have all your samples created. So now in contact, you see I have my nice, beautiful contact instrument. Now, making an interface is pretty easy, um, but I'll go over that in a second, uh, not in too much detail because it, it can get kind of involved. Um, but what, what I did is that once you open up contact, you're going to make a new instrument, and then you click Mapping Editor, and then this is where you drag in all your samples. So if you go into your All Files, you can go into the folder. I put them in Bounces and then all these files are saved in there. And you just essentially just uh, control A, make sure you're only highlighting the samples, or actually probably better to click one, click down, and then you just drag them in. And what's gonna happen is that Logic is going to just kinda throw them wherever. So you have to highlight them all, and you wanna go to Auto Map Setup, and then in this window, you can actually look through your file structure. You can ignore all these, and you can actually click this, and you can say make that the root key. You close that. If you right-click again, go to Auto Map Functions, then you can hit Auto Map Selected, and it will move them all around. If that doesn't work, just look on Google, and either I'm explaining it wrong, <laughs> I, you know, I've only done this a couple times, uh, or there's a better way to do it, or it's a different version kind of thing. So that's going to put all your instruments down. And I don't have my system audio recording now, so that you might not be able to hear that, but now across all six octaves, I have the notes mapped. So now I can just go ahead and play, and everything's going to work, just at least to some degree. Now, there's different things you can add. Um, what I do is I added a low-pass filter. I also added another chorus. I did activate the chorus on the Juno so that it would record the wonderful chorus sound of the Juno. Um, but I only did chorus one because I didn't want it to be too overwhelming. But I found that there's a different kind of sound that's generated when you're holding like a, you know, a couple notes with the chorus than if you sample the chorus note by note and then play it back as a chord. It doesn't sound exactly the same. Um, I did do a comparison of you know, raw recordings from the Juno versus the exact same thing being played with the sample instrument. And I kind of tuned it to the point where it sounds exactly the same. So 
I have that chorus effect added just to kind of blend all the choruses together, and that made it sound much more realistic. In the filter section, I also just kind of tuned uh, the specific cutoff I have in here to the cutoff I have in there. I did record it with a slight filter activated just because the Juno has a great filter and it's an analog filter, of course, so I wanted to make sure that I was capturing that, at least to some degree. Um, but I kept it pretty open and bright so that you have the option of going between fully open and fully closed with a software filter. Aside from that, I had some EQ that I did to, again, match it to the original, the exact patch I used. And then I have the volume modulation down here. So I did make a custom script. Um, this is nothing fancy, um, but, it, you know, there is some programming you have to do to get this. It is possible to go into the presets find factory presets and you can add you know a lot of different things to control it or you can just do it down here now the instrument in the download it's this exact group of files so you will have this interface just to kind of show you roughly what that that looks like in the script um, essentially it comes down to things like declaring the height of your user interface declaring all the labels and the buttons and it's pretty straightforward it's a scripting language so it's very high level um, in terms of programming structures uh, you're not doing like C or something but then you're, you're just kind of letting the knobs receive control commands and adjust parameters based on those commands. And, you know, I, I did copy some presets that they ha have for the humanization parameters, threw those in there, uh, just because it's, it's, it gives it a little more, you know, humanity. Because uh, you can activate, like, the tuning, um, which can kind of simulate the effect of, uh, you know, if you're holding down a core, if there's a little tuning drift, it sounds good. So even though the, the Juno is a, has digitally controlled oscillator, um, you know, it still makes it sound a little richer. Then I added some pan effects. Um, and then, you know, there's going to be other patches inside of the download as well that you can check out. All right, so I think that pretty much covers everything. Just in summary, uh, the process was to get logic to route MIDI commands to the Juno so I could just automate the whole process of recording samples, come back half an hour later, slice them up, name them, export them with you know a note identifier at the end so that contact can seamlessly automatically import the samples and map them to the keyboard i went through the kind of you know advanced uh not really advanced but the instrument editor and i you know i started adding filter chorus i compared it to the original i tweaked it until it sounded as close as possible and then um i wrote a little custom script just to make the gui you know easy so if you don't have any experience working in contact you can just open this up in contact by the way it does have to be the full version of contact just because you, you have to purchase licenses um, for me if, if i wanted to sell this i'd have to sell this for at least a hundred dollars and get licensing stuff from contact and it, you know this is not the kind of instrument you do that with this is a small simple instrument that i'm giving away for free so you need the full version of contact but if you don't know how to actually use contact to make stuff and go into the edit mode, you can just open this up and play with the filter, the envelope, and the humanization and the chorus just right off the bat. So if you want to get this instrument, you can head over to my website, generastudios.com, under the Featured Products tab at the top, and then click the Juno 106 Simply Square. Uh, the product page will be a free download link. Uh, hit the link in the description to make it easier, so you can just click it and go there. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, please let me know and, uh, if you have any feedback for how I can make you know, these kind of instruments better or how I can improve the process, please let me know. And subscribe for more. I upload videos every single Friday. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.